Commanders, this is Brightwood from Oracle Station bringing you our crew analysis of Jonathan Archer from the Star Trek series Enterprise. Star Trek Fleet Command brings us Archer in the second arc of the year during February of 2024, and that's Enterprise Part 2. Jonathan Archer is finally added to the game to captain our United Earth Starfleet's Enterprise NX-01. Archer is an epic officer whose division is Command. His faction is Federation and his in-game group is Enterprise NX-01. Jonathan Archer commands the first starship Enterprise NX-01 during the 22nd century. As captain, he plays a crucial role in expanding United Earth's presence in the Alpha and Beta Quadrants. His accomplishments include making first contact with various species, including Klingons, Andorians, and of course the Zindi. Archer's leadership ultimately saves Earth from the Zindi threat and contributes to the establishment of the United Federation of Planets. And because of his role with the Zindi, it's no surprise that his captain's ability is Delphic Salvor, which increases the amount of resources that you get from destroying Zindi hostiles by 300%. This ability receives a 100% synergy bonus from science and engineering officers, but only a 50% bonus from other command officers of the Enterprise NX-01 group. His officer ability is Faith of the Heart. When you take damage from a hostile or another player, Jonathan Archer increases your critical hit damage by 5% for two rounds. And this will go up to 50% at rank five or the level commander. This ability can stack, but it does not trigger at armadas or assaults. This is an impressive ability at higher officer levels, but keep in mind that with the prime critical deck floor, he cannot reduce the critical damage below your opponent's critical prime floor value. And that value can be up to 200%. I can see this having value in our base defenses, and it'll be very subjective to your opponent's ships, their crew, and your ships as well. Because Jonathan Archer has both a captain's and officer's ability, he does not have a below the deck ability. As an epic officer, Archer will have three ATA traits. Those traits are captain, explorer, and leader. As always, I will keep this as a high level review of ATAs. To really understand the value of Archer for your ATA needs, you will want to review the ATAs he's eligible for and then determine their value to you. You can do this with the Amazing Officer tool put together by Stewie Dube and Lube. The link to the tool is in Oracle Station's Discord. I do have to say that I am actually pleased with the choices of the three ATA traits for Jonathan Archer. All of them are very fitting to his character. Now let's get into Archer's ATA traits and see if we want to use our ATA trait XP on him. There are 13 officers that have the captain's trait, including Jonathan Archer. It's interesting that there is only one of these officers that is not an epic officer, and that is Tomalak, and he is just a rare officer. But we're not here to talk about Tomalak and his ATA traits, we're here to talk about Jonathan Archers. There are three ATAs for the captain's trait. One of these is going to scale up at operations level 30, and those ATA missions are Crystal Contractor, and this is a two-day ATA version that will give you raw crystals, service rewards, and common crystals on a crit. Emergency evacuation, and this is one that will change at Ops 30. This will give you Federation reputation and on crit Federation credits. At Ops 30, it will also give you service awards as well. 
And finally, we have First Contact. This is also a two-day ATA, and it will get you Federation reputation and Federation credits on a critical along with service awards. Emergency Evacuation and First Contact are two that I really like, and the reason is because they give you your reputation and faction credits. So if you're working on your Federation rep, these two ATAs can be very valuable, especially when it comes to the Federation credits. But these two ATA missions are not enough reason for us to invest trade XP into Don Jonathan Archer. Remember, there are 12 other officers that have the captain's trade. And of those 12, 11 of them are epic. So what about the Explorer trait? Including Archer, there are four officers with the Explorer trait, and there are four ATA missions. Those missions are Cultural Exchange, which will give you Federation credits, service awards, and Federation G3 ship blueprints on a critical. This is a, a three-day ATA. We get Deep Space Reconnaissance, uh, this is a 12-hour ATA mission that will give you rare star chart service rewards and on critical more rare star charts Again first contact This is a two-day ATA that will give you Federation reputation and service awards with a critical reward of Federation credits Finally stellar cartography this is another eight hour ATA that is going to give you your rare star charts with more rare star charts on a critical. And it also tears up at operations 30 to include service awards. Here we see the first ATA mission that Jonathan Archer is actually carrying two traits for. And that will be first contact. Looking at the other officers that are options for first contact though, there appears to be a much better officer to use on this ATA mission. And that is going to be Georgie O. She actually is triple trait for this ATA. This makes her the clear choice for investing our trait XPs into if we're interested in critical success for first contact. And finally, we have the, the leadership ATA trait. There are nine total officers that have this trait, including Jonathan Archer, and all of them are epic officers. The, this presents us a lot of choices for the four ATAs that use the leadership trait. Those ATAs are Alliance Exocom. This is for the health stat and it scales at your operations level. Cultural Exchange. This will give you Federation credits, service rewards, and on a crit Federation G3 ship blueprints. Imperial Strategy will give you away team credits and on a critical we will get Romulan credits. And finally, we have Peace Treaty. This has two variants, and they both run for five days. The rewards are Ultra Recruit tokens and service rewards. And with a critical, they give us specific officer rewards. For your first variant, we can get data or crash shards. And the other variant, you will get Kelvin Pike shards on a critical. These are all decent ATAs if you're interested in the rewards, but looking specifically at cultural exchange, which Jonathan Archer is dual traded on, we will see that he will pair well with Eurydice if you are trying to get a critical on this ATA. Both of these officers have two of the four traits complementing each other perfectly. If you need the ship blueprints, this might be worth the criticals for you. Oracle Station is going to rate the interest in Jonathan Archer for ATAs as a medium. 
if it wasn't for the two ATAs that he has multiple traits in, we would probably have considered him to be a low. But both of these dual trait ATAs have what I would consider to be very good rewards. Now that we've taken a quick look at Jonathan Archer's profile, what do we think are going to be his advantages and his disadvantages? First, let's list out his advantages. The Zindi loot increase appears it's going to be very nice. His officer ability is both PvP and PvE, and his officer ability is cumulative. He also has multiple traits on ATAs. His disadvantages are his captain's ability only works on the Zindi, so that makes him a very focused captain. And his officer ability is kind of weak below tier 3. Also, his officer ability doesn't work against armadas or on assaults. The increase in Zindi loot is significant and will definitely help in speeding up the acquisition of the loot to progress within the Zindi loop. And the fact that it has been limited to the single hostile type does detract from the value of his advantage his officer ability has some potential though, but it seems kind of weak until it gets to tier three. Combat rounds are just too short, and the fact that it is limited to critical damage doesn't help either. His multiple traits on ATA is very nice, but he really is only valuable on the one ATA where he would complement Eurydice. On paper, Jonathan Archer really feels like a one-trick pony, similar to most of the specialty ships that we have in the game, especially with his captain's ability only working to increase Zindi loot, leaving us with his officer ability as the only potential we have to find diversity in Jonathan Archer. And that's going to be hard, especially since it's limited to critical damage. The fact that his officer ability can stack does help a little bit, but when we consider how few the number of rounds are in a combat, in most scenarios, this only increases the perception of how limited Jonathan Archer might be. Let's hope once we get into testing out Jonathan Archer that this isn't going to be the case. It is fairly clear the different ways that we can actually leverage Jonathan Archer in the game. In the captain's chair, he's obviously for use against Zindi targets. We'll get the benefits of both his captain's ability and his officer ability against the Zindi. We also have the potential of using Jonathan Archer in our PvE hostile grinding and potentially in some PvP activities. So while we think about the different ways that we could leverage him in our PvE hostile grinding and in PvP, let's take a look at how we're going to leverage Jonathan Archer against the Zindi. If you're engaged in the Zindi loop, you're definitely going to want to use Jonathan Archer. The increase in the amount of loot that's going to drop by using him is going to help your progression and reduce the amount of time that you have to engage in this activity. So let's dive into a few different crew configurations that I have found are beneficial against the Zindi while using Archer. We will also take a look at a couple different builds that have unique benefits specifically against the Zindi Aquatics. It's time for some small text, in, or in other words, a disclaimer. You're going to need to test these crew builds out. They are very susceptible to your research, operations level, crew level, and your ship's power. Now, there is no real punching up in the Zindi hostels. What we're going to be trying to do is to efficiently gather the resources dropped by these hostels. Just keep in mind, these crews really are geared for increasing our amount of loot 
and not for increasing the level of hostiles that we can hit. Now, I'd love to go into great amount of detail about actually working the Zindi loop, but this video is specifically for Jonathan Archer. I will be working on a video for doing the Zindi loop in the near future. So look for that video to come out hopefully soon. I will update this video and put a link here when that video does become available. So let's put Jonathan Archer in the captain's chair so we can go farm some Zindi hostels. Again, Archer in the captain's chair is going to give us his captain's ability, Delphic Salvor, and his officer ability, Faith of the Heart. Now we are going to have to figure out what crew are we going to use in the officer's chairs to complement him? This is going to greatly depend on our crew options, both on the bridge and below the deck. The reason I'm pointing out below the deck is that if you can crew well below the deck, we will have greater flexibility on what we can put on the bridge. But if we can't put an efficient crew below the deck, we're going to have to account for this on the bridge. So let's say we have a very strong Tom Paris or Boimler. These two are going to give us some mitigation below the deck, allowing us to be a little more flexible on the bridge. So in this case, we could partner on the bridge with Jonathan Archer by putting five of the 11 next to him to get us an increased loot drop from five of 11 along with the loot increase that we'll be getting from Jonathan Archer. And then in the other captain's chair, we can actually put synergy with Archer if we have it or someone like James T. Kirk to increase the morale of our ship, which should, depending on our research, generate isolytic damage. For the crew that I'm going to be running, I'm going to have Jonathan Archer in the captain's chair Trip Tucker in a side seat and 5 of 11 in the other side seat. Below the deck, we will run Tom Paris for our mitigation and then Harry Kim to try and trigger morale to generate some isolated damage on our NX-01. We can then fill the remaining crew slots below the deck based upon your research and your Zindi bonuses or the open slots that you have. And don't forget, if you can afford him below the deck, you can also have the doctor to increase your loot even more. This is significantly increasing the amount of loot that hostiles will drop, but it's not going to let us punch up. So you're going to have to find the balance between hull health and the loot you acquire from your hostiles. Now, what if we can't stack our below the deck with our mitigation officers? What could we do on the bridge and still leverage Archer? This is really going to depend on the officers that we have available to use in an officer seat. Now, keep in mind, we're not able to put the appropriate mitigation officers below the deck. So we have to have the flexibility on the bridge. So now we're going to have to do some mitigation officers in our officers chairs. My personal first choice would be to use Jonathan Archer and then the doctor to give us our mitigation. And if I have trip, I would put trip in the side officer seat next to Archer to help increase the amount of loot that we will get by boosting Archer's captain's ability. Now, what if we don't have the doctor? Or maybe our doctor isn't that good. We could try using TNG Beverly Crusher, or we could use SNW Spock, especially if we're running our NX-01, which is an explorer, and we're going after the Interceptor, Aquatics, or Interceptor Reptilian. But we really don't want to use our NX on the Reptilians unless it's our stronger sh ship. Or we could even look at maybe using TNG Wharf for his mitigation abilities. So there's a few different choices that we could look to put next to Archer 
to increase our mitigation depending on who we actually have available to us. What about using Archer on other hostels that aren't Zindi? Well, in non Zinni hostels, we are not going to want to use Archer in the captain's chair because his captain's ability isn't going to benefit us. Keep in mind that we have to take damage first before Archer's officer ability will start to activate. It will stack the more the unique weapons that damage us per round, but we'll have to take the damage. Because of this, we will need to consider how many weapons fire per round from our hostiles and make sure we are not mitigating all the damage from those shots. But this is based upon the way that Archer is written. It's very possible that Archer will actually trigger as long as we get hit by a shot and not that we actually take damage from the shot. So keep this in mind as well. In PVE, we, we already have some pretty good crew setups for grinding hostiles. But if we really want to see if we can get some benefit out of Jonathan Archer against these other hostiles, here are some ideas that we could try out. If we have Archer, we will want to run Hugh below the deck. He will complement Archer by increasing our chances to do critical hits. Without the critical hits, Archer is basically useless for us. So to me, I will always want to pair Hugh and Archer together on the same ship when it comes to PBE. So our first setup, let's try Calvin Pike, Morio, and Archer. With this, we're going to gain ship XP if needed while grinding hostiles. And our primary issue is going to be too few combat rounds to really see huge benefits from Archer spinning up, especially if we're not generating the critical shots. Another alternative we could try is Janeway, the Doctor, and Archer. This isn't a terrible setup for the new silent enemy, and it is actually great on freebooters. And the last setup I would recommend is maybe E Picard or Enterprise Picard, Enterprise Data, and Archer. This is going to give us a loot increase from our non Cindy hostels. And along with our increased amount of critical shots, we're also going to have that boost in our isolated damage. This is good for reputation increase as well, since that's also boosted by Enterprise Picard. I saw a great increase in our loot gains from silent enemies as well, but it requires you to have Paris below the deck to get a good return on the use of your token against the silent enemy. Speaking of getting a good return on the use of one of our tokens, I did promise you a special build on something that will help us against the aquatics. I know I mentioned a couple builds, but technically this is one build. And the reason it's one is because this is the only one that includes Archer. And I really wanted to keep this focused on Archer specifically. So I will cover the others in a separate video specifically for the Zindi loop. So let's get into the group build. To start, we will put Archer in the captain's chair. To support Archer in this particular build, we will put Giorgio in the officer's seat next to him. Giorgio is going to give us the burning condition, which is going to be very important to support the next officer that we're going to use. And that officer is Tao. We'll put him in our other officer's seat. Then below the deck, depending on the number of slots that you have available, we would put Tom Paris to help a little bit with some mitigation in case we need it and then the doctor to help increase the amount of loot that we're going to get he'll again supplement jonathan archer as you have more slots open you can play around with the additional crew 
but these two are the specific ones that I believe you'll want to have below the deck. This configuration is going to allow you to punch up significantly against the Zindi Aquatic Hostels. If your odds are successful against the initial 33% chance of the big gun firing, you should take out your Zindi battleship and acquire a significant amount of loot. When I was testing this configuration out, I was successful in taking out a few Zindi Aquatic battleships. And this gave me enough resources to not have to engage in them for several weeks. PvP is going to be interesting Interesting with Jonathan Archer. With the Carol Freeman crew and the Strike Team crews, PvP just doesn't last long enough to really see Archer spin up in ship-to-ship -ship combat. So I'm not going to waste our time here discussing potential options that just won't work. But when it comes to station defenses, there may be a use for him in augmenting your bold or oceans defenses or a hybrid that you may have developed. This of course is completely dependent on your availability to be a little more creative in your base defenses. Otherwise, I would not deviate from the suggested bold and ocean defenses. If you're curious about these defense setups check them out in oracle stations discords base defense channel most of these base defense setups are based off of a five dock build so if you have more than five docks you have an extra ship that you can play around with alternate crewing on and that's the way we're going to look at this crewing for jonathan archer in our base defenses for an example, I'm going to use my Voyager and how I crew it up for myself in incursions. My Voyager is my interceptor ship I usually use to strike out quickly and intercept miners or some defenders. I'll make my Voyager ready for a quick change to support base defense. Because the crew that I run for my quick intercept crew isn't very good for enhancing my base defense. With most of my good crew on my other ships, that are providing the base defense or my primary base defense, I'm going to have some flexibility below the deck on my Voyager. Leveraging that, I will put Archer below the deck so that when I'm in a heightened defense posture on my base, I can quickly pull up my Voyager and then move up Archer from below the deck to a better enhance Voyager's ability in my base defense. This will also allow me to swap back quickly when I'm ready to go back into interceptor mode with my Voyager. In this example, we're going to use Jonathan Archer as well as Trip Tucker to complement my Enterprise E Riker. All of these officers actually will work in PvP. So this now takes my interceptor version of Voyager and makes it more suited towards my base defense. Let's run through it real quick. We can see that Riker is going to increase your critical hit chance by a percent for four rounds. And this is every time we score a hit. Trip Tucker is going to decrease my opponent's critical damage by a percent for two rounds after we take damage, or actually I think we take a hit from the attacking commander. And then, of course, Archer is going to increase our critical hit damage by a percent on taking a hit or damage. Because these abilities are a direct reduction or a direct impact by percentage to the attacking commander, it's not dependent on my below the deck crew to support it. It's just directly applied. And I really like this as a supplemental ship helping me with my defense. I never did really get a chance though to see how well this would work. Most of my base defenses actually ended before the end of round one, not giving Archer, Riker, or even Trip the chance to spin up. In summary, Jonathan Archer is going to best serve us on the bridge of our NX-01. Fighting the Zindi Aquatics or grinding the Zindi Reptilians. Some of us might find some benefit in using Jonathan Archer in our base defenses or in some PvP, but a lot of us are not. 
there's some potential in PvE as we found during our testing. It does work well supplementing some of our standard hostile grinding crew builds, especially against the silent enemy and potentially the freebooters. This does save him from earning the one trick pony crew status. Acquiring Jonathan Archer is pretty much the standard acquisition method that we have for all crew new officers in the game. You will have your events and special store packs that will allow you to acquire shards for Jonathan Archer. You should also see him start to appear in some of our special events, such as the syndicate event that runs a couple times a month. He will be available in the Final Enterprise Part 3 ARCS event store, so you could look for him there. Other than that, we'll have to wait for him to get added to the standard acquisition methods that we have within the game. So let's go back and review our advantages and disadvantages for Jonathan Archer, now that we've actually completed our application review. We'll definitely need to adjust his advantages. We still get the loot increase from Zindi, and I really like that. His officer ability is also both PvP and PvE. That hasn't changed. His officer ability is cumulative, and he does have multiple traits on ATAs. But we did find out that he has some potential on freebooters and silent enemies. I think we got the disadvantages locked down pretty good in our initial assessment though. His captain ability only works on the Zindis and his officer ability is kind of weak below tier three, especially in combats where we have limited number of rounds. His officer ability does not work against armadas or on assaults either. In conclusion, I think that Jonathan Archer came back around on us once we got into actually testing out using him in other scenarios outside of hunting the Zindi. He was very close to being a single use officer in the game. I really hate to see officers, especially officers that are iconic epic officers, feel like they have only one job. This makes Jonathan Archer a little more useful, but does it make him an officer that we have to have? Outside of collecting him or trying to complete the Enterprise NX-01 group, is there really a necessity to obtaining Jonathan Archer? Unless your plan is to fully engage in the Zindi mechanics, the answer is going to be no. And because of this, Oracle Station is going to rate Jonathan Archer as a nice to have. He's going to increase the speed of progression of your export faction store and your enterprise NX-01 development. But outside of that, he isn't really necessary for your progression in the game. Check out our website for more videos. And join us in Discord using the link in the video description to continue the discussion and get access to more resources. We hope you found the video informative and helpful. If so, please give us a thumbs up and share. We look forward to your comments and suggestions. Live long and prosper, Commander. This is Brightwood from Oracle Station, signing off.